you know, going back to what you did as a doctor, look, um, I don't, I don't know if this is for you. Like how many total surgeries would you say you've done? Okay. What's the total amount of heart surgeries you think you've done? Uh, well over 10,000. Well over 10,000. Yeah. Okay. I want to ask you a question. You can totally decline to answer this one, but, uh, you know, for, for being in the military, the last thing you wanted to do was deliver any kind of bad news to anyone. And sometimes you have to deliver bad news to someone's spouse and, hey, your husband is there or your son is there. It's a very painful thing to do. And that job, I know a couple of my friends who had that job. Let me tell you, when their day was over with, you, you did not want to look at them because they just sometimes it was not an easy day for them. And that's their job. That's what they're supposed to do. Some of them that had been around for a little long time still hurt them, but they knew it was part of the job. Have you ever lost patience? And if you did, what was the first time when that happened to you? What was your reaction the first time it happened to you? Well, one, one of the things um, that you do have to have in your head going in is that you are not going to lose this patient, that, that there's no way that you would even go in thinking that you would. And it's, it's like, um, what Terry Bradshaw used to say, every pass I ever threw was for a touchdown when it left my hand. And I think that's the same sort of attitude you have to have. I, I became famous as a surgeon who would operate on people who were inoperable, who were turned down. And so I knew going in that uh, some people were not going to make it out. And I've had, in the years, I had people who I would have never guessed that they, you know, were not going to make it through the surgery. Um, and yet, looking back, the family would go and say, gosh, you know, we went back to the house and, and mom had made casseroles for dad for two weeks. And she left notes of, you know, here's where everything is. You know, it's like she knew and, I, you know, I'd go, oh, why didn't she tell me? But one of the things, uh, there, there's a famous saying that, that surgeons carry around a cemetery in their head. And if you're a good surgeon, you visit that cemetery and you, you go to that cemetery to learn from the people that didn't come out alive. And you know, what could you have done differently? And I think, I hope that that's what makes a good surgeon uh, from a not so good surgeon. I, I knew a heart surgeon that lost patients and that surgeon would say, ah, poor bastard, it was just his time. You can't do that. You have to, you have to learn from the people who don't make it. And you know, what would I have done differently? Um, I'll give you another great example. I was talking about this earlier. I, I have a patient who's now 15 years from the time I was scheduled to take him into the operating room. He had had a massive heart attack. He had five vessel coronary artery disease. We scheduled him for surgery. We're mm -hmm. down going into the operating room. And he looks at me, he says, Doc, I'm scared to death. He says, I don't think I'm going to make it. And I said, well, wait a minute. Yeah, good. Okay. I'm you know, glad you feel this way because I take this seriously. He says, isn't there any other way? And I said, well, yeah. I said, look, if you become my best patient, I promise you, you will never be operated on, you know, by me or anybody else. And he, I said, but you got to promise to be my best patient. He says, oh, I'll do anything. I'll do anything. We just celebrated his 15th year from me not operating on him. Wow. He was a bad diabetic. He now passes his stress tests. We joke about it. That's cool. And, yeah. And so it's never too late, which is one of the messages. But yeah, you got to, yeah, you're right. Uh, and I was a children's heart surgeon too. And there's, um, you know, it's, it's one thing to maybe you know, lose somebody who's had a great life and they're 80 or 85, but it's another thing when it's a newborn baby or a two-year-old or a three-year-old that has their entire hopefully life ahead of them and they don't, they don't make it. Now, 
the only reason we operate on these children is because they have no future unless we are able to put their hearts back together. But still, it doesn't make it any easier to, you know, to live with that. Um, so you, you, have to, you have to have a cemetery you visit. And luckily, I have one. Uh, I, I was actually visiting that cemetery this morning um, just to visit it. Yeah, to me, I can only imagine how emotional it can be, you know, for, for somebody who does it like the way you're saying it right now, where you have that relationship to, to sit down with a patient and say, if you listen to me 15 years, when my dad had his first heart attack, 94, I can tell you exactly where I was. I came out of high school. I was in 10th grade. I was at the kitchen uh, uh, off of Broadway, 1323 Broadway. My friend Art was there with me. My mom's cooking something. My sister calls me saying dad had a heart attack. And I ran to the hospital and saw him there. It was a interesting moment. But my dad listened to his doctor and the doc said, maybe you got 10 more years if you make this. That's 94 from a massive heart attack yet till today. So I salute doctors like yourself out there. What you do is patriotic. We need people like you to do what you do because without you, there'd be a lot of people out there that wouldn't have those additional years with their families. So, so salute to folks like you that do what you do on a daily basis. I appreciate you personally personally for sharing that uh, wisdom and perspective with us. 